Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria back to you with another review of Married at First Sight season 15 episode 4 called Sand, Sun, and Spouses. So we pick up where we left off last week with the couples getting to their rooms, their hotel rooms with the exception of Morgan and Ben. We start off with Kristen and Mitch settling into their hotel room and in my personal opinion, Mitch looked like he was a little bit more interested in Kristen, once she took off all her makeup and put on some like regular schmegler degler clothes. So that's all I took from their little scene. We move right on to Lindy and Mitch. They get settled into their hotel room and Miguel lets the producers know or let us know in his little confessional that, you know, he's ready for potential sex if, you know, they were to get, you know, talk and it leads into kissing and the kissing leads into sex. But it don't happen because he already undressed. He's laying in the bed. He's, you know, patiently waiting for Lindy. And, of course, you know, they have to be dramatic. You know, five minutes turns into ten minutes. Ten minutes turns into twenty minutes. Twenty minutes turns turns into thirty-five minutes. And then, meanwhile, on the opposite side of the door in the bathroom, we have Lindy... You know, going a little berserk, not in an aggressive fashion, but more like, a, like, shit, I can't find this, or fuck, I can't find that. And she's, like, looking through all through her suitcase and stuff, because all she wants to do is, like, brush her teeth, take off her makeup, and go to bed. So, of course, she was being, like, a little antsy, and after a while, Miguel gets out of the bed, he goes, checks in on her, and, of course, he sees her stressing out about not finding what she needed to find in her suitcase, and... For Miguel, in his confessional, he let us know that's, you know, he's a little concerned because of that. And for this episode, I just feel like I'm tired of him and his and his sister saying they concerned about Lindy. Knowing damn well, Miguel probably got a little red flags about him too. So, anywho, we move on to Stasha and Nate. They get settled into their hotel room. And... Nate lets us know that he's looking forward to some pillow talk and cuddling. But, of course, you know, the producer is going to prod. And they was like, so are you looking, Are you? would you rather cuddle or have sex? So, Nate was going to be like, I'd rather have, but then he stopped himself. He was going to say he'd rather have sex. He, he was going to say that, but he stopped himself. And he said he likes talking to her. And he's just waiting for when they get a little bit more comfortable they, then he'll know the freaky stuff will follow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you're going to get more comfortable by talking to each other. But I feel like, Nate, you're going to probably probe in that, you know, poke the bear a little bit to get to that state faster than if it were to happen naturally, so to speak. In my personal opinion, from the way he be talking, it seems like you're going to try to, not force necessarily, but... uh urge that to happen sooner rather than later from what we've seen later on uh in the in the shower we'll, we'll get to that though so we move on to uh the night finishes the couples wake up the next morning all smiles and giggling and whatnot Kristen talking about she on cloud nine uh they eating breakfast and talking and Mitch says he's happy Okay, whatever. I put she don't know. I don't know what I, I I don't know why I wrote down that note, but I'm just gonna let it be known. So if I miss something, let me know. But we move on. Uh Kristen lets us know her and Mitch ain't ain't do the do yet. Usually couples never really do the do the first night on this damn show. But that's fine. But Kristen lets us know even though they ain't do nothing, she ready for when that time comes. All right, Kristen. Okay. You you ready? You show? You know, Kristen, I, I just really have this question for you. Like, really? Like, you find Mitch attractive. Like, you really, do you really? Because I'm still trying to figure out why. But, you know, everybody has their own life. And just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give her that. But I'm just like, Kristen, really? Like, you you really ready for this? Like, for, for with Mitch? Okay. Anyway... So, they get to talking over breakfast. Mitch lets us know that he's a picky eater. And, you know, that's nothing surprising for us, but I guess it was surprising for Kristen. He talking about he don't like creamy white sauces. So, 
You probably ain't no Alfredo sauce. Uh, she talks about mayonnaise and sour cream, so he said no to those, but I'm pretty sure Alfredo sauce is one of those sauces he don't like because it's creamy and white. And, you know, I want to say something, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> uh, so he's like, you know, I don't know if you can hang with that. So Kristen was like, oh, I can hang with that. I'm like, Kristen, please. This is only episode four. But Kristen, I just hope you don't conform yourself to what Mitch wants in a wife. Because Mitch just needs to marry himself at this point. I said it last episode. He, he just needs to marry himself. So, Kristen, I just hope you don't conform yourself to this man. And if you feel like you're giving a lot, I hope he's giving a lot too. Like it's a 50-50. Or, sorry, 100% on both sides into the marriage. And not just you giving 80%. Or maybe 150%, he giving you 10%. So, that's what I'm going to say to you, Kristen. We're going to move on to Lindy and Miguel. They chit-chat while they eat breakfast. Lindy is happy. They talk about traveling. And Lindy goes into the, you know, she needs to have, uh, where I was going to say sex. She needs to have snacks whenever she's traveling so she can maintain her blood sugar. She goes into that aspect a little bit, you know. Lindy talks a lot. A lot of the females, a lot of the females on this uh, season, they talk a lot. Uh, three out of the five women, in my personal opinion, I feel like talk a lot on this uh, on this show so far, on this season so far. So she goes into that whole spiel, and Miguel lets us know in a confessional, nothing that we don't already know, but saying that Lindy, she's kind of a stress ball, and from his observation, and you know that's concerning. He didn't say all that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. But because it's so concerning for him and his sister, I'm just like, Miguel, you just need to be with your sister because both of y'all are so concerned of Lindy. Granted, she talks a lot. She, she, she do talk a lot. And, you know, I might get annoyed with her within the first 24 hours of being around her too. But she seems like a sweetheart. It's one of those, you know, those people that's like, they talk a lot and you get annoyed because they talk a lot. But it's like, you know, if you were to say anything, they probably might take it a hard and get offended. So you just kind of like let them be. But, you know, like you're not going to really want to talk to them every day. It's kind of like a once in a blue thing. You'll talk to them, but not an everyday thing. That's what Lindy seems like to me. <laughs> I know I went on a spiel, but that's what Lindy seems like to me a little bit. But, I mean, good luck uh, to you, Miguel. God bless. And keep your sister out of your personal business. Because she, she, she's getting my damn nerves. We're going to get to her, too. But we move on to Nate and Stasha. They have breakfast and talking. Stasha blew me the hell away. She she rated her Nate already. This is like day one. Not even 24 hours being married to the man. She's talking about on a scale of 1 to 10, she rates Nate a 100. A 100 out of 10. Stasha, you don't know this man. You you literally met this guy less than 24 hours ago. How the hell is he 100 out of 10? I, I can't rate nobody with, I mean, you could give first impressions. And, you know, first impressions, everything is going great. I just feel so happy. You know, I just hope it, you know, continues on this path, even with conflict. Say something like that. That ain't no 100 out of 10. I don't even know. You know, how you are for real? Why? Because I slept next to you for one night? That don't mean nothing. I don't say nothing. One day, he could just be sleeping peacefully. The next day, you could be waking up, he's standing over your bed with a knife. I'm just saying, I'm not going to that extreme saying he going to do that. You know, but at the same time, you, you can't really tell some, how someone is from one day. Not, well, not even 24 hours. Stasha, please, you, you, you really jumping the gun on this one. But I'm just going to give it to you for, for lust purposes. Not not for love. Not no damn 100 out of 10. Stasha. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. But anywho, they connect and trauma bond on being too light-skinned for the black folks and too dark-skinned for the white folks growing up. Okay. If that's how you guys connect, whatever. We move on to Alexis and Justin. They pillow talking and talking about her sticky booty or whatnot. I'm like, okay. And then, (sighs) 
Justin does a confession. <laughs> he does a confessional with no shirt on. And when I seen this confessional, I'm just like, why y'all doing this? Why y'all doing this? You know how people want, why y'all did this, producers? Why y'all, why, why what, what, for why? What was the purpose? Because you know, especially on Twitter, you know how them people be. And sure enough, the people on Twitter, they, they was eating them up. I'm, you know, me personally, I was just like, yeah. okay, Justin, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for, you know, being so confident. I will give you that, Justin. You are a confident man, okay? But they ate you up on Twitter, okay? Black Twitter ate you up to, on, on tonight's episode, when he did your confessional with no shirt on. But okay. He does his little confessional. And then Alexis says the experts did a good job on, on picking her husband. Like, I don't understand why these cast members, because that's what they are. These cast members, they be so quick to be like, oh, yeah, he's perfect. I see why the experts matched us. He's this, he's that. I love him. Oh my gosh, I'm just falling so in love with him. Knowing damn well it's only been like not even 24 hours. You know, after eight weeks, if you feel like that, then then we can talk, okay? Then we can talk, but 24 hours don't mean nothing, okay? Of course, people want to be on their best, be oh, their best behaviors within the first 24 hours, okay? Let me know how it is when you guys get back from a uh, honeymoon, okay? Then then we could talk. Then we could talk about how you feeling. But I don't really care how you feeling until after eight weeks anyway, because this could all be a facade for the TV show. So, anywho, um... She puts her phone number on his phone. They take a picture together so it could be the her picture for her contact. And she puts herself as wifey. We move on to the spouses having brunches with their in-laws. You know, they do this every damn season. So we start off with Stasha sits down with Nate's dad and friends. It goes well. Nothing to take from that conversation. Nate sits down with Stasha's mom and friends. He gets a little emotional, but it looks like it went well. They seem to... You know, their little shell or wall they had built up against the guy, I don't know, kind of broke down a little bit when he cried and stuff. I'm just like, damn, Nate, you putting on, on a great performance. Not saying it was fake, but I'm just like, this is a performance. He made sure his eyes got red and he teared up and cried and anything. You did a great performance, Nate. Um, do I think it's real? Maybe 50%. I'm not saying the things he went through was fake. I'm just saying this uh, reaction and um, choking up and crying was very, very well performed. Nate. What, very well performed. You got them. You didn't really get me yet because, you know, I, I watch too many damn shows and I see too many damn people crying on these damn TV shows. So, you know, it don't really phase me like it do maybe them and, you know, in person and stuff. But, you know, great performance, Nate. great performance. We move on. After that, all oh, it went well, whatever. We move on to Mitch. He sits down with Kristen's mom and friends. And they said when they were saying, you know, things about Kristen at the wedding ceremony, when the officiant talks and stuff, they said she was bougie. But the mom wants to let it be known that Kristen ain't bougie. She's not a diva, even though they said that in the wedding ceremony. And Mitch was like, okay, if you say so. So after that, for the most part, it all goes well because these interactions is pointless, okay? Whatever, they're they going to always make it seem like, oh, we're doing great or um, the first night was awesome and I can handle this situation and I can handle that situation. Knowing damn well it's going to be chaos later on in the season. So th th all this crap, all this crap is just for the TV show. For the aesthetics, just so they could make the episode longer. So it could go to damn 25 damn years of one damn season. Okay, anyway. So after that, everything for the most part goes well with Mitch and Autumn. We move on to Kristen. She sits down with Mitch's mom, Mitch's brother, and uh, Mitch's sister-in-law, which is Mitch's brother's wife. So they don't paint the best picture of Mitch saying that he's brutally honest and you know, sometimes he could be this, sometimes he could be that. You see Kristen's face getting a little red and, you know, she's moving her mouth a lot doing this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can see her face getting red. She's getting a little flushed. And I'm like, girl, we know you don't like what you're hearing, but I mean, this is the, this is the, uh, 
this is what you took by coming on the show. That's the chance you took. That's the, no, that's the risk. There we go. I was looking for that word. That's the risk you took. Uh, see, I was about to call him Morgan. <sighs> These people are com combining to one person. Kristen, <laughs> that's the risk you took coming on this damn show. Because you know, after all these damn seasons, for the most part, these producers, because I'm convinced at this point, the experts don't even match the, these couples. The producers match the couples, but tell the experts, okay, just, just make it seem like you you picked them together, but this is who the couple's going to be. So the experts probably don't even have say-so in this. Okay, so listen, Kristen, you knew what you signed up for. So you're just going to have to either deal with it or be like uh, Chris from last season and say, no, I want a divorce. So you, you let us know what you do and we'll see you later on in the season. Anyway, we'll move on to Alexis. She sits down with Justin's mom and friend. And I don't know why the hell she had to let the mom know, you know, Justin's still celibate. Like, why are you so caught up on that? Because later on in the episode, she's going to be telling everybody that Justin's been celibate for one and a half years. Why is that such a thing to tell the whole damn world? Yes, I granted, because I know she said on the, uh, uh, after the show, after party crap thing with uh, Keisha Knight pulling, that, you know, everybody's going to find out anyway. Okay, let them find out when they watch the damn show, Alexis. That's not something you need to tell everybody. Unless if he gave you green lights to just tell the world, world. I just still think it's, like, weird of you to have to let everybody know, oh, yeah, he's celibate. He's celibate. Oh, just, your son's still celibate after last night. The mama don't need to know that. Granted, your friends don't need, I mean, you're going to tell your friends anyway, but you, you don't have to just speak it out loud for everybody to know. If Justin wants people to know, he'll let them know. But that's not for you to tell people about his personal things. That like, As a wife, you fucking up already. Point blank, period. Alexis, you fucking up already by letting people know his business. Because I'm sure, pretty sure you wouldn't want him to be letting everybody know your business like that. What, what, what was the, they were saying earlier? Sticky booty? You know what I mean? Like calm down even if you don't got a sticky booty i know you guys were joking but still like come on like you're doing a little too much alexis but after that it goes well for the most part and the mom lets alexis know that justin is a little bit sensitive she says she can handle that but when we move on to justin sitting down with alexis sister justin admits he ain't no little bit celibate he's See, I'm saying celibate already, not too much. Alex, Justin's mom. See, look at it. I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. Justin's mom lets Alexis know that Justin is a little sensitive. But then when Justin's sitting down with Alexis' sisters, he lets them know he ain't no little bit sensitive. He's very sensitive. So the sisters just been looking at him. With like a stank ass face. You know, they try to give him a third degree, so to speak. Even though they already gave him a third degree the day, the night before. Literally the night before. Which is why I'm like, this is, this is, all this shit is pointless. It really is. But whatever. They put this on the damn show. I'm reviewing it. I'm going to keep watching it anyway. So, I, yeah, I'm going to talk about it. So, they gave him a little stank face. And I'm just like, y'all just really just looking very stank. Like, just be, y'all doing the most. A lot of people, y'all be doing the most. I don't know why y'all be looking at him like that, giving him the third degree. When you know whenever you give people third degrees like this shit, they're going to give you the best answer they can come up with. They're not going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fuck ass now. I'm a dog. I'm a, I'm a dog, your, your sister. Like, come on. You know what I mean? So all this is stupid. This is all this, all these theatrics. Like, okay, we're going to grill you. Grilling session time. Girl, bye. So anyway, I already went on my rant about that last episode, last review. So I'm just going to move on with this. We get Miguel. He sits down with Lindy's mom, brother, and friend. And the brother admits that Lindy can take things a little personal sometimes and does lash out. And I'm just kind of concerned how she lashes out. Does she lash out like Michaela from season 13? That's, I guess that's something we're going to have to see. But um, they then going to talk about sex. Because the mom brings that up, of course. Because Miguel asked, is there anything you want to know about me? So then the mom was like, oh, with the sex. 
So then the brother goes into this whole spiel, you know, when you, you know, with God in the Bible, when you have sex with your wife, then that's when you know them. That's when you guys create a covenant with God. More so, let's be, let me, let, let me, let me, because he going into too much. Okay, let me break it down, okay? Pretty much what he, what he trying to say, okay? What he trying to say is when you have sex with someone, you become one in flesh, okay? So now you you guys are sharing soul ties, all that stuff, okay? That's 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 what he's basically trying to say. While I do understand what he's saying, I do agree to what he's saying. Miguel don't want to know all that shit. First off, he don't want to be talking about y'all and having sex with, with Lindy when he hasn't even had sex with Lindy yet. And first, and not even first off, but quite, frank, quite frankly, it ain't none of y'all damn business what him and Lindy be doing behind closed doors. They're not married. So that's between them. Why the fuck we talking about this shit? Like, sorry for my vulgar language, guys. Sorry. But at the same time, why is this a conversation? Why is this a conversation? Miguel look a little, like, uncomfortable, but he he stood his ground, I guess, so to speak. But um, Lindy's older brother, you're, you're overstepping your boundaries. You're, you're really overstepping your boundaries. Like, you already had this discussion last night. There ain't no need to be doing this again. So, you, you, y'all you doing the most. Anyway, the brother doesn't really seem too fond of Miguel when he did the confessional with his mom. But that's not up to you. If Lindy likes him and wants to stay with him, she gonna stick beside him. It, it ain't up to y'all. Okay, you can have your own opinions or whatever. But I really feel like you just don't like him because... He don't believe in organized religion, per his words, per Miguel's words last episode. You know what I mean? So, F all that that uh, Lindy's brother is talking about. So, we move on to Lindy sits down with Miguel's friends and sister. <sighs> Out of this whole episode, this has to be maybe the most annoyed I was with the in-laws. Not even the friends. The friends were just giving... Lindy, some side eye looks. It was the sister that was annoying the hell out of me. Because she's so damn concerned for everything. Because, you know, she believes in astrology. And Miguel's a cancer. And Lindy's a Gemini. And, you know, according to astrology, you know, those two signs are not compatible. So, you know, Miguel's sister is just concerned about the aspect and dynamics of their relationship. And then it don't even end there. We go into, you know, Lindy. No, not even Lindy. Miguel's sister. I don't even know her damn name. And it don't even fucking matter because she gives on my damn nerves. You know, also with that being said, you know, with the finances. How is Lindy with her finances? So, of course, Lindy had to go and be honest. Talking about she got some, a lot of student loan debt. So, hearing that, oh my gosh. Miguel's sister is concerned with that aspect. So then Lindy talking about she's so scared, you know, it, it stresses her out with knowing all the the loan debt, the student loan debt she has. But at the same time, she does want to live her life and still lives her life and goes out and travels and stuff. But, you know, she does have a lot of student loan debt. And hearing that just makes Miguel's sister even more concerned because Miguel's been through a lot and, you know, he's not trying to be, you know, having to take care of him and his wife solely just him. He wants the wife to put in work too. And he's he's built his, his life and career so well that he doesn't want to be torn down with someone else's debt. Even though he willingly signed up for a show, knowing he took the risk to be married to whoever. Miguel's sister, shut up. Oh my gosh, I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed. I'm like, how many times she going to say she concerned for her brother? Your brother signed up for a show. He know what he was doing. So you can take your little concerned ass out of here. Because, listen, if Miguel was so concerned about his own damn life he wouldn't sign up for this damn show knowing he could have been stuck with somebody like christina from season 11 who don't even live no damn well okay who really needs a sugar daddy so i don't want to hear it miguel's sister could get the hell on um 
Is there anything else for this other than her being concerned for her brother? Because she wants the best for her brother and, you know, doesn't want him to be strained or burdened. Lindy was looking a little overwhelmed. I'm like, Lindy, girl, you... <laughs> Listen, I can be respectful. Trust me, I can. I listen, I can be respectful. Trust and believe. I be respectful every damn day. Especially at work. I be so I be so respectful. But best believe, behind closed doors, I'll be cussing up a storm. So I'll be like, okay, I can understand that, but I'm a woman of my own. I can handle my own handle my own and all that stuff. And then behind my mind, I'll be like, girl, bitch, do you got a man? Cause if you don't, I see why. Anyways, we're going to move on. We're not going to talk about her much longer because that's that's it. Well, we don't see her for the rest of the episode. Thank the Lord Jesus. So we move on to uh, Mitch and Chris and they do video diaries. Then all the couples come together to talk about how their brunches went with their in-laws. Then we have Miguel and Lindy talking. Obviously, Lindy admits to Miguel that she does have a lot of student loan debt. So Miguel seems like he's okay with that as long as he don't got to be nobody's sugar daddy. He says that in confessional. I think he told her some aspect of that in person. So, you know what, Miguel? Cool. As long as you don't become nobody's sugar daddy, you cool with that. So, then Lindy gets into a little talking spill. And, you know, the producers are going to make it look like it dragged on. It could have been a two-minute conversation of her talking or monologue of her talking. But from the way it seemed like she was just talking forever, Miguel was looking a little annoyed. And he said it's not really a red flag of her always being so like stressed out over thinking and talking too much but it's more like a magenta colored flag and i just hope miguel you don't nitpick too much granted like i said it seemed like she do talk too much because alexa said the same thing but at the same time miguel i feel like you making it seem like you're so perfect and it's lindy who's gonna be the one having the problems when at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. Not none damn one person perfect. So I'm I'm gonna wait for your I'm gonna wait for your time to shine, Miguel, to see what you what you got going on that makes you not perfect as you think you are. You know, because your sister wanna talk about you're so concerned, like you're the perfect like no, you know something wrong with him too. No, he got a crazy ass sister. That's what the hell it is. But anyway, we're gonna move on. So the couples, they get their basket of things like of sandals, sunglasses, and stuff to give them hints of where they're going to go for their honeymoon. But from the note of where it says, it says something. I don't know what the first couple words were, but they're going to Mexico, okay? They're going to Mexico for their honeymoon. Everybody's excited. They have like poppers and stuff. But, oh, wait, we get to Kristen and Mitch. And Mitch saying he don't really take too fond of the poppers because it's triggering, triggering for him. Because when he's on the beach, those are the hardest things to clean up on the beach. So it kind of brings Kristen's mood down because she was excited to go on the honeymoon. But with him being like that triggered because of damn poppers in the damn house that he can just pop and clean the fuck up. You know, she was just a little annoyed about that, but... Then she was like, I'm going to wear this shirt. But then I guess he was already complaining about the shirt. Probably because the material of it is not 100% cotton or whatever the fuck. So he said he wasn't going to wear it. But she said she was still going to wear hers. So then he said, okay, if you wear yours, then I'm going to wear mine. <sighs> like I said, it's not even an ex. I can't even blame the experts at this point. The pro I'm convinced the producers picked the couples. So... The producers know what they're doing. They're just trying to build drama. So, you know what? I can't even talk about compatibility anymore at this point. It's just like, Mitch, you know you're not supposed to come on this damn show knowing how you are. You really should just try to look for your perfect person, and which in reality is just yourself. But whatever. So, like I said, Kristen is a little annoyed with that. We move on to Alexis. She shows Justin her bathing suit that she's going to wear at uh, the honeymoon Justin was feeling it. Then Alexis let us know in the confessional that if he's with it, she's with it too in regards to sex. And it's just going to be that. So they're going to be, looks like they're going to be very sexual from what they be talking about. Then we move on to Ben. He finally got his two negative COVID tests. And Ben and Morgan will be getting married the next day. Final fucking leap. Took you guys about four damn episodes, but okay, cool. So the couples all meet up at the airport and they fly to Mexico with no little 
video diaries of anything that happened on the plane or whatever. So that's good, I guess. And my only question was, why why Justin got on the little ass sombrero on his damn head? They they really want to make Justin look like the clown this season, huh? Well, everybody else who came out regular schmegla degla, but he want to come out with a little sombrero on his head. Did he did he decide that, or the Alexis was like, here you should put this on, laughing internally at her husband. I don't know. That's just a thought I put out there because I'm just like, he's the only one. He's the only one. But they all go and sit down somewhere and cheers over drinks and, you know, catch up and talk. And Miguel let it be known that he made a move sexually, I believe, to Lindy, but she turned him down. So Lindy was like, no, it wasn't like that. She just wants to build an emotional connection first. So, of course, everybody else is agreeing and putting their little two cents in. And that's when I, Alexis lets everybody know that Justin is cel- has been celibate for 1.5 years. And then, of course, Mitch putting in his two cents, saying, oh, you know, at least he chose to be celibate. You know, I don't really choose to be celibate. celibate. I just don't have the luck with the ladies. And that's why he don't be effing like that. He didn't say that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. But I'm like, yeah, Mitch, we know. We know. It, it's You didn't have to let us know that. We, we already knew that. We already figured that out from the way you be acting uh, just on these couple episodes alone. We, we know, Mitch. We know. So then Justin had to let us know, Tom Bow, you know, because I think somebody said it's hard, though. I think it was Lindy who said that. No, no, it was Nate who said, you know, it'd be hard, you know. No. <laughs> I don't know who said it. Somebody said it's hard. You know, the temptation is there. So then Justin had to let us know, yeah, man, be hard. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm sorry, guys, but I'm I'm just going to let it be known. Like, you know, when I woke up this morning, you know, my my dick was hard as fuck, man. My thing was hard as fuck. Whenever she touched me, she just gave me goosebumps, man. You know, they was all laughing and stuff. Mitch and Kristen was like, ooh, whoa. You know, because they're the more reserved ones of the crew. I'm just like, you know what? I have friends, you know, they be very vulgar with the way they talk. So it really didn't faze me. But I'm just like, thank you for letting us know you had very hard-ass morning wood, Justin. Thank you. You know, I don't know when was the last time you slept in a bed with a woman. But, you know, I'm I'm not surprised. Uh, just, you know, I appreciate the transparency in that, Justin. <laughs> cool. Whatever. Listen, I'm, I ain't mad at it. Whatever. You had, a, you had a hard dick for your wife. Okay. So we move on to <laughs> the couples that get to their hotel rooms. It looks nice and whatnot. And Mitch and Kristen, they do the little pillow talk over champagne. He still got a bandage on his damn head. And I believe later on in the season for the sneak peek and whatnot, it looked like he got a permanent scar on his damn head from his cut and whatnot. We move on to Nate. He's talking about he hopes to consummate the marriage on the honeymoon <laughs> the way y'all was acting, it looked like y'all gonna consummate the uh, marriage that night. Stasha, talking about she don't want to have meaningless sex, but like I said, the way y'all just went about this scene, looks like you're gonna consummate the marriage that night. Because here they talking about going to shower together. They talking about so they can save water. Yeah, okay, who, who you? Uh, Mitch down the... Down the hallway, a couple doors down. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, so they get in the shower. You know, it's all steamy and stuff. They they kissing and making out in the shower. He grabbing her leg up and stuff. She holding onto his back, you know, so they could zoom in on the James Allen ring and whatnot. I see what y'all did there. Um, And, you know, they're just making out. Hot. And I'm just like, so the camera's really being there while y'all get naked to get in the shower. Like, y'all approve that shit? Because I wouldn't. But, I mean, I guess this is for the TV show. But I don't know. You know, I just you know, I just want to know what the cameraman was saying during this scene. Because, you know, when they be having these hot, steamy, sexual scenes, like, how do the, the crew around me, like, how they be feeling? Like, y'all just willingly just like, yeah, I'm going to just, I'm just going to be like a soft pornographer and just get this whole scene in, you know, zoom in and whatnot. You know what I mean? That's what I be thinking, like, y'all okay during these scenes when you film it? Okay, whatever. So we move on. 
it is finally Morgan and Ben's wedding day, folks. So they are both happy. Ben's happy because it's the day before his 30th birthday as well. And Ben really cares more about what his mom's going to think about his wife as opposed to his dad. Of course, we know that. Ben's a mama's boy. Who cares? Whatever. We move on to Morgan. They popping bottles. The friend breaks her champagne glass from popping a bottle. Excuse me. Uh, Morgan's dad's not going to be at the wedding. And she lets us know that it's okay because she didn't really let him know about it to begin with. Because they be having like a little riffraff. A little, you know, not a very good dynamic in their father-daughter relationship. So she's going to be walking herself down the aisle. And she gets her gift from Ben. He got her a book from Pastor Cal. It's a gift. I mean, I like to read, so I mean, I would like the gift. But, you know, whatever. You know, she seemed like, oh, okay, I'm not really too fond of it, but I'll take it. And she read the note. She loved the note that he wrote her. She gets her engagement ring from James Allen. Adult calm. And as easy as one, two, three. And, of course, they have a sponsorship moment where they zoom in on the James Allen. Uh, so, that went cool. Then we get to the actual wedding. Ben brings two little tiny bouquets of flowers, one for his mom. And I'm assuming the other one was for Morgan's mom, but it doesn't show him giving her the flowers. But it doesn't show him giving Morgan the flowers either. So, obviously, the producers probably cut that out. And then we get to the wedding ceremony. It goes a little interesting because Morgan is weird. She talks a lot and very quirky and awkward. But I think it's just because she's nervous because she was also very cringy and loud, in my personal opinion. But, I mean, usually the weddings are always awkward and weird anyway. So after that, they kiss and walk down the aisle. And then in the last scene, they pop some bubbly and talk. And Ben just seems very nervous and awkward. But at the same time, I'm going to give him some leeway and some slack. And I thought it was very kind of cute because, you know, it's like he's just like, oh, my gosh, like can't contain himself. But at the same time, like doesn't know what to say, like thinking of every word he's going to say before he says it. So I just thought it was kind of cute of, you know, him being like that. And like I said, Morgan seems quirky too, but just more in the loud, out social type of way, whereas Ben seems like more of the reserved and like shy type of way. So Ben talks about kids, but then when he mentioned that to Morgan, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, if you plan to have kids one day, she doesn't really answer, but says she got a cat and now he's a cat dad. So this leads me to believe, uh, Morgan, uh, do you not want kids? Because it seems like Ben does. I mean, even if you didn't want them right now, you could have at least be like, oh, yeah, eventually down the road in a few years, but not right now. I want to enjoy life as a married couple. But you didn't even say that. So I'm just like, do you not want kids? Because if you don't, then we got a whole other problem. Of course, producers will do this like every couple of seasons, but whatever. And the last thing I put is Ben is scared that she does my type. You know, Ben, as long as you don't cross her, I think you'll be fine. You know, she she might just beat you up uh, if you were ever cross her. But I think as long as you, you stay in the right area, you might be fine. But knowing the way this, the previews for this damn season, you're going to break her trust like twice or three times. I don't know. And, you know, it's going to be a lot of crying on this uh, season. You know, Justin going to burst out in tears. Lindy going to burst out in tears. And go <laughs> As she walk away from Miguel, Miguel gonna look like he annoyed with her. Kristen look like she gonna be the one that ends the marriage before the eight weeks decision day come. The way she had uh, all the experts looking at her and uh, what what's his name, Mitch, next to her and stuff on the beach. Of course, um, who else? Uh, like Justin gonna look like he fucked up with Alexis. She gonna look like she mad at him. Uh, who else? I'm missing somebody. Oh, and Stasha and Nate. What was going on with them in the previous? I didn't, I don't even remember, to be honest with you. It don't even matter. Anyway, that's it. That's it. That's it. But it's uh episode. We're going to see what happens next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please uh subscribe. And please comment. Let me know what you thought about this episode. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.